Hey everybody, Red Kiwi here. I'm gonna tackle a big question and that is, in Microsoft 365, what tool do I use when for collaboration? Let's talk about that. Okay, we're back. When we look about collaboration needs, I'm getting tons of questions from people on where do I store documents? Where do I get company information? How do I share a document with people inside my company and outside securely? What's the best way to message people within the organization, whether it's a small group, large group? Where do I go to get an answer to my question? If I want some real-time interaction, audio, video, sharing my desktop, what tool should I use? So let's dig into them. So when we look at the Microsoft 365 teamwork environment, there are different tools that you can use for different circumstances. And we're gonna drill into each one of them. So most commonly Outlook used for email, calendaring. Some of the things that you could do with it to sort of advance your usage is instead of using sort of old school legacy sort of distribution lists, maybe look at creating an Office 365 group and using the inbox associated with that shared notes, files, etc. And uh, keep your group up to date with a shared calendar. So one of the other things I wanted to sort of classify each one of these tools with is an interaction audience tone and sharing because that really will help you guide which tool you should be using. So the interaction with Outlook is gonna is slow, right? You send an email, you don't expect a real-time response. Your audience is gonna vary from sending an email to a single participant to potentially a whole division or the whole company. In terms of its tone, it's generally quite formal. You've got time to craft your email before you send it. In terms of sharing capabilities, relatively low in terms of you're sharing it with those people on the to list to bring people in after the fact is something that you have to do uh, rather than if you were to post it to a community, people can join the community and see it. Uh, let's move to SharePoint. So SharePoint is very popular in its use of an intranet, team sites. It's very good at managing content in a very structured way. Uh, so some of the things that you can use it for is, as I said, intranet, use, create team sites and use the automated document workflows. And also, if you've still got the sort of T drives or people storing documents on their actual hard drive or on their laptop in the My Documents folder, really look at moving them to something like OneDrive where it's much easier for them to share. It's automatically backed up to the cloud. You get the beautiful capabilities of SharePoint like versioning and e-discovery under the hood. So let's look at the classifications for SharePoint. The interaction is relatively slow in terms of you post something to the intranet and it in some ways is often a one-way communication. It's not a real-time form of interaction. Audience can be quite large. You post something to the intranet and it could be seen by everybody. The formal tone is fairly typical of an intranet, although team sites uh, could potentially be a little bit more informal. The sharing is medium. You can upload documents to team sites and, and share them and what have you. So I think that's relatively good. It's very easy to share files in OneDrive. I'd probably classify that as high. And with that, I want to do a quick demonstration just of OneDrive for you. So here I am in my OneDrive experience. I've got my, my folders and my files. So I just, and I'm just in a web browser and I want to upload a file. So I've got a document here that I'm doing some preparation on GDPR. And all I had to do is drag and drop it into the web page. And it's uploaded and it's syncing to the cloud. So if I want to share this GDPR preparations document with someone, all I got to do is click on this and put somebody's name in here. Let's do Lynn Robbins. She's within our organization and she can view and edit this document if she needs to. I can change that to say you can't edit uh, and you can only open this document until Saturday. 
The other thing I could do is actually invite someone from outside the company. So let's do Peter Smith at hotmail.com. It warns me that Peter Smith at hotmail.com is outside my organization. And when Peter gets this message, he'll have to log in to his Microsoft account and prove that he is Peter Smith at hotmail.com and he will get access to that document. Again, I can say he can't edit it and the uh, it'll time bomb at a certain date. And next up is Yammer. So this is really a tool to allow you to connect across the organization. So some examples of use cases would be creating a community around a particular topic of interest or an area of practice in your organization. Use it to drive initiatives across organization divisions and to drive innovation across those different uh, groups. It's a, often used as a way to for leadership to collect feedback from staff. I want to give an example here. So I had a customer who is a shipping company and they had seagulls that were, let's say, crapping, defecating on their equipment. Anyway, it was costing them a lot of money and time. Anyway, one of the ship hands took a photograph of this mess and posted it to one of the Yammer groups. And one of his colleagues in another country said, hey, we've solved that problem. Put plastic owls along the side of the ship and it'll scare the seagulls away. They did that and they're now saving lots of money, lots of time. And I challenge you, how would you do that over an email? How would you do that in an intranet? Where would you look? Where would you search? Uh, who would you call on Skype? Or what team would you look in, for example? So it's much, much easier in Yammer because it is looking to go across the organization. So when we dig into the classifications of it, interaction can vary. It can be post and get a response in a few days, or it can be semi real time. The audience is going to be large. That's the intent to go across a division, across the organization. The tone, because it's social and semi real time, can be quite informal. The sharing can be quite high. So it's quite easy to share inside a community. So with that, let's take a quick look at Yammer. So here we are in the Yammer community for our demo environment. On the left hand side, you've got groups that you belong to. So I'm in the sales, the marketing, HR, there's the CEO connection where I can ask and post questions to the CEO. Uh, and this is my feed. This is my update feed that I can sort of scroll through. Uh, we're making plans to have an open off space implemented. Love it. Um, and say, can't wait for our building to be done. And I'm going to notify Megan because I've been working with her specifically on uh, our designs for our building. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I'm going to do a GIF that says uh, excited. <laughs> that one looks pretty cool. So I'm going to do that one there. As you can see, an informal tone. It's fun. I'm sharing. I'm liking. Uh, I can go into a particular group and search. Uh, let's go into a marketing group. Let's see if we can find something on. So there's a product that I'm trying to get some information on called the DG 2050. So let's see what there is in terms of posts on that topic. So I can see here that Adele has, uh, it says great work on the marketing effort for the, the DD3000. We plan to use many of the ideas in the G, DG2050. So I could click on Adele and let's follow her and maybe send her a message. Next up, we're going to talk about Skype for Business. So this really is the platform around real-time form of communication. So the use case example is I need to meet in real time with my colleagues from different regions, different time zones. I need chat, audio, video. I need to share my desktop. Or maybe I'm a divisional leader or the CEO and I need to broadcast a rich message to perhaps the whole company or a division 
and how do I do that? So using Skype for Business is the tool at the moment. As you may have seen in our public announcements, we are going to be uh, slowly migrating that to Teams, which we'll talk about next. But in terms of that communications capabilities, the interaction is fast. It is real time. You are looking for obviously chat and a response, audio and video, obviously real time. The audience varies. As I said, it could be just a one on one meeting. It could be a one on many. It could be one to all of the organization. From a tone perspective, it varies because it is real time. You often will get more informal tone used in the the meetings. But if it's a broadcast, it might be a little bit more formal where there's an agenda, there's keynote speakers, there's breakout sessions. So it's a little bit more structured from a sharing perspective. In some ways, it's high because you can quickly share information but it is limited to those people who are in the meeting right now. And once the meeting is done, unless you record it, it's difficult to reuse that, that collaboration experience that you had. So next up is Microsoft Teams, which I've done a, quite a number of videos on. So I won't do a demo on it, but really the, the intent for Teams is more focused on a project within your group of team members. It's a, an initiative. It's something that you want to use to stay connected with your team on that project using chats, calls, meetings, collaboration on documents, etc. It's a very easy way to create and edit and share files. Its interaction is going to vary in terms of in some ways it's going you upload a document and you don't expect a response for hours or days, but in some ways the chat you're expecting sort of real time, a real time interaction with those team members. The audience is probably going to be small. It really is going to be maybe 15, 20, 30 people in that team that you're collaborating with. The tone varies from sort of informal to, to formal, but because it's more real time, uh, it's more social and it's interaction, it's going to lend itself more to informal. The sharing is quite high. It's quite easy to join a team. As you join, you can get up to speed on the information that's been shared. It's persistent. So that really helps with having a high sharing capability. If you want to see demo on Teams, please look at my other videos that are in my channel. The other topic that comes up is where do I store files? So the first scenario is where do I store files that I'm working on for me? Traditionally, you would have done that on a T drive or potentially your My Documents folder, heaven forbid. Uh, but what you should be doing in those cases is moving those documents or creating new documents in OneDrive for business. The benefits of that, as we demoed earlier, is that it's more secure, it's easier and more secure to share with your colleagues and people outside the organization. You've got version history, you've got workflows, it's available in the cloud so you can access it on any device where that is very difficult to do when it's stored on your my documents or stored on a on a file share now if you need to have a document that's not really necessarily associated with you it's more associated with a project that you're working on then you really should store it in teams and that there's a files tab as we've shown in the demos where you can we can store that and the benefit of that is that if you leave the team then the document still persists with that project now if you want to store a document or share a document on a best practice or as part of a community that's very broad and across the organization, then that is Yammer. That's where you need to store that document so that you can share that document and best practice with the whole organization. So I hope this video gives you a little bit more clarity on what tool to use when, under what circumstances, once again, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Bye.